Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I got a new 3D printer. Uh, I needed a printer with a bigger build volume. Uh, this one's 300 by 300 by 400, I think. I got the TiVo Tornado in 2020. Is that right? 2020? That sounds weird. But yeah, 2020. Uh, I know it's kind of shocking. It's a little bit old, but it's, uh, it's a nice price point for a large volume printer. Uh, so I went ahead and went with it. Uh, the new updated version has a glass bed. I'm not familiar with printing on glass beds. I've had like a build tack type surface before that I'm used to. I've really been trying to dial this thing in and get it running, um, just printing PLA because PLA doesn't stick well to glass, but still working on it. I uh, did a couple mods, uh, go over those in a second. And right now, what I want to do is make a tray that will fit underneath the bed and store all the tools that came with it. So let's get over to OpenSCAD and make that tray. Okay, we're at the computer. Let's go ahead, let me clear some things out of the way. Let's go ahead and open open SCAD and let's, uh, let's get to modeling this tray. We're gonna do a new, and it opens up a new window for open SCAD. So we're gonna try to do this in as few commands in open SCAD as possible. So first let's make a cube of what our dimensions were. And that was 130 millimeters on the X side, 200 on the Y, and 30 millimeters tall on the Z. And let's put our bracket in. And instead of our parentheses, we're gonna put in one more thing. Center equals true. Then we'll put our parentheses in and our semicolon. And let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so now what that did is that put it right in the center of the axes here. Now, why, why do you want to do that? We want to do that because it's going to make it easier just to overlay another cube right here and put a cutout in there to kind of make this a tray. So we're going to leave it at that. But, but to do that, you know, we got to do the difference function. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I've used this one in an earlier video. Um, what difference does, we need that squiggly bracket. Don't forget to end it too. That's one thing I always forget to do. So I'm gonna put my end in now. And then what this does is this will subtract whatever we put here on this line below from this line above. So if we put a cube under here and what we wanna do is make it smaller. So let's go two smaller, 128 on the X, 198 on the Y, and I want to make it taller so it goes through the top, 35 on the Z. Uh, and you can play around with these settings in yours and see what it looks like. But I can tell you this isn't going to work. Let me show you why. If we do this right here, what did we forget to do? We forgot to make it center, but it's still not going to work. So center equals true, and that will take it out of the middle. Oh, what happened? Well, we took our bottom out. Now, why did we take our bottom out? Because everything sits on the same plane right now. So what we need to do is move this cube right here up. So let's to move, we do a translate. Zero comma, zero comma. Let's move it up three. And then we put our bracket in. And we don't need a semicolon. Ugh. We don't need a semicolon after the end to translate. That's the way those work those transformations. So now let's see if we can get our bottom back in. Ah, uh, we did it. And our bottom looks good and solid. All right, so that's all there is to making this basic tray. Again, very basic uh, tutorial on how I make parts with my 3D printer. Um, let's go ahead and render this. Uh, and then we'll export this as an STL so we can open it in our slicer. Um, I already saved it uh, as a tornado tray. So let's go ahead and open up our slicer. And let's go ahead and open up our tornado tray. And there it is. As you can see, looks pretty good. I think it's gonna work. So let's go ahead and slice that and it'll tell us about how long it'll take to print. And I have it set to normal setting since it's a tray and gonna be hidden. I don't need to do it in fine. Um, 
looks like about 14 hours. So let's go ahead and send this to the printer and see what it looks like. Uh, hey guys, here's the new tornado. Um, I'm having some issues printing on the glass bed, doing some trial and error. This one is a glue stick, but I don't know. I got some funky, funky things going on there. We're going to see how this turns out, but I'm watching it like a hawk. It actually prints really well, um, other than, you know, those little pieces. Uh, I've had to do a lot of adjustments. Oh, and here's, here's my failed print before. It curled and I, I think uh, the axis just bumped and everything got shifted. So I stopped that, started a new one with some glue stick down. That was with no glue stick. I've been trying really hard to get it to, get PLA to stick to a glass bed, but not working. Uh, we'll get there, a couple more tests. Uh, I did upgrade level leveling knobs. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. One thing that I found online, if you have one of these, invest in some little rubber washers. Those make it easy to level the bed without holding an Allen wrench sitting on top of those. And what I got was this plumbing repair kit. It had a bunch of washers in it. And that, uh, that did the trick for me. But the tornado went together really nice. Um, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, the first layer. I adjusted the first layer from the profile to make the layer width wider. Uh, it, the default is 100%. I changed the first initial layer to, I think it was 150. That gets it to the first layer to lay down real nice. I'm just not sure what these splotches are. Maybe I didn't get the glue down good enough. I probably should have watered it down a little bit to make it even. I'll try some hairspray and some other things next, but uh, what I'm making is a tray that fits right under here uh, to hold all my tools for this printer. We'll keep an eye on it, see what happens. Okay guys, we are into the four hours of this 12 hour print for this tray that's gonna go right there underneath. Looks pretty good. Everything's sticking down good with the glue stick. I don't see anything starting to come up yet. I think we're good. Check back in a few hours, see where it's at. Okay guys, finally finished. Check it out, looks really good. I think I got maybe a little banding there. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but I guess I got some tuning to do on the Z side, but we'll get there. So it's pretty awesome. I love coming up with something as basic like this, just a necessary part, right? From a piece of software to a physical object, just never, Never fails to amaze me. So this is uh, this is my use case for this. Um, set it in here, and then I can take some of my tools that came with the printer. Keep them organized under here. There we go. Not bad, and that glue stick worked really good. Uh, sorry, I got my finger in there, sorry. That glue stick worked really good on the glass bed. Uh, I just need to uh, probably wet that down and spread it out a little bit. But uh, stuck really good, no bending on the corners, no curling or anything, so I think I found the way. That's all we have for today, guys. Just a quick model up of a tray and a print. Let me know what you think. I, I, I really like using OpenSCAD and the 
code version of it. This is very simple. I didn't go with anything fancy or, you know, do any rounded corners or anything. Just a open box, an open top box to hold the tools. Um, so more parts to come. I've been doing a lot in open SCAD. There's going to be getting more and more complicated as I said before, but look for those. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. We will see you next time.